Narcissist and Friends. Friends are non-intimate secondary sources in our fuel matrices. They are of moderate potency when it comes to the provision of fuel, and they're useful for character traits, residual benefits, chief amongst which, of course, is the operation of the facade. Our friendships aren't genuine, because we have no emotional empathy. We lack accountability towards the relationship, and we behave with a sense of entitlement. And, of course, we use them to manipulate, either manipulating the friendship itself, or using it to manipulate somebody else. For instance, through triangulation or smearing. A friendship is transactional in nature for us. It's there to be used, and we only maintain a friendship to get something out of it. There are seven truths about these friendships that you ought to understand when it comes to the interaction between the narcissist and friends. Not only if you are a friend to the narcissist, but also for you to understand where you're the intimate partner of a narcissist, how the narcissist friends interact with you. Number one, our friends don't really like you. The people that we choose to provide our inner and outer circle of friends have all been charmed by us, and roped into our sphere of influence for the purpose of providing us with fuel traits and residual benefits. They, in return, are granted repeated audience with ourselves. They are able to gaze on the Sun King, and benefit from their association with such a social titan. When you are admitted to our sphere of influence as an intimate partner, these friends of ours only like you, because they know that that is their role to like you, and they must do so in order to remain able to attend at our court. Should we give the instruction, they will turn their backs on you in an instant. Never believe that you can turn to them in a moment of need. You will head straight into a brick wall. Should you be admitted into my sphere of influence as another member of the inner or outer circle, then these friends are your competitors. They are all seeking my favour, either to remain in the inner circle or to achieve promotion to it, such as the allure and attraction of being friends with us. These other friends will smile and welcome you, because that is what is expected of them. But they are smiling assassins, who will pounce and delight in plunging the dagger of isolation and ostracizing into your back, should we will that to happen. You are entering a viper's nest. Number two, it is a one-way street. You will benefit from your association with us as a friend, and you will enjoy our company. Who would not, when we are charming, magnetic and interesting? But you are only allowed to occupy this position so long as you are giving. You must provide me with the fuel to keep me topped up through your praise and admiration. I expect you to be an errand boy for me. You will carry out my machinations on my behalf when I require you to manipulate someone by proxy. You will get me things, give me things and do things for me because you want to stay in the elevated position of my friendship. It is also highly likely that I possess some information about you or something you want which compels your compliance also. You are the giver, and I am the taker. It is one way. 3. Our friends do not know what we are. The blazing brightness of our brilliance is such that it obscures what we really are. Any complaints about our behaviour will be met with rejection and a confused response. They have always been treated well by us, we let them join us, and we allow them to follow in our wake, which has numerous benefits. They have no idea what we actually are, for if they did, they would not continue to be part of our retinue. They do not want to know any different, however, because they have been brainwashed into thinking that the status quo is to their advantage, and therefore they see no reason to entertain anybody who speaks to usurpers. Number four, your friends are all targets. I have no interest in making friends with your friends. They are beneath me, but I will regard them as targets. They may well be, there may well be your replacement amongst them, and how satisfying would that be to corrupt one of your supporters to turn against you and sit at my right hand? I will charm and ensure that your friends think well of me, as this will not only make my seduction of you as my intimate partner primary source far easier, it will also provide me with fuel, traits and residual benefits as well. Your friends are targets to be my new intimate partner primary source, 
or members of my coterie, and possibly even lieutenants, so that I have a fifth colonist in your camp, willing to act on my behalf when your inevitable devaluation begins. Number five, our friendships are defined by their usefulness. As I have explained, the concept of friendship for us is all about what we can take from it. And therefore, so long as someone is providing us with what we require, complying with our wishes, providing us with the control and carrying out what we want, then the friendship will endure. Should one of our friends see through us, turn against us, or begin to fail in their assigned role, it is of little consequence to us that we may have known them for ten years or more. It is of no concern that we go drinking with them every Friday. If they do not function as a constituent appliance, then they will be switched off, excluded and replaced. We make friends easily, and we keep them far easier than you might think. Very few leave us. We do the disengagement, if it ever occurs. 6. Our friends must never outshine us. We prefer our friends to be beautiful and handsome, but not better looking than us. We like to have a beautiful crowd around us. It signals to the world that we are the special person that we see ourselves as. We want the interesting folk, the talented, the successful, and so forth, as we are, of course, able to steal traits from all of these people to accentuate our own success and popularity so that we are better able to seduce yet more people into our fuel matrix. We want them to achieve, to look good, to be fascinating, so long as none of them outshine us. We benefit from the reflected glory, but it must not shine brighter than our star, otherwise someone will suffer a corrective devaluation, possibly a disengagement devaluation. There is only room for one king on this throne. Number seven. We appear to like our friends, but we like their fulfilment of the prime aims, really. The members of our inner or outer circles often appear to be liked by us. This is purely the outer manifestation of our fuel-filled selves. What we really like is that our friends are satisfying the prime aims. Of course, lesser and mid-range narcissists do not realise this, greater and ultra do. The fact we say that you are a good badminton partner really means that you're providing us with fuel, that you're submitting to our control, and we have the residual benefit of having someone to undertake some sporting exercise with. The fact that we declare we enjoy our morning lift share with you really means that we enjoy the fuel that you provide, the control that you submit to, and that you are providing the residual benefit of enabling us to save money. Remain within our control, fulfil the prime aims, and as a friend, a non-intimate secondary source in our fuel matrix, you will appear to be liked. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.